right, rolling. Is that rolling? Yeah. All right. Hi, my name is James Hughes. I'm Mark Riel. And uh, this is session four of the YMC. Session four of the YMC. What's it about? Uh, it covers the fundamentals of HTML. Basically, it, it uh, communicates to the browser um, what your content is and how to display it. It's the first time where they can take the stuff that they've been working on offline and then make it actually appear in their web browser, which is always kind of like a you know, light goes on uh, for a lot of people seeing their, their own stuff. And you know, they just built uh, their first web page. They just built their first like, little website. Okay, so my name is uh, November Michael News. <laughs> my mustache is slipping off, so I'm going to take it off and reveal the real thing. This is a week four of the YMC, and we're finally getting into uh, HTML uh, coding. Uh, you need to walk before you run. Uh, I think we're going to be getting into CSS later on, and also PHP, and uh, HTML is still a backbone of the internet. Uh, so you need to create the foundation before you start building the actual building itself. So you, know, you need to have basically somewhere for the website to stand on. HTML is what it is. So you need to basically have that structure first. Okay, so uh, we're going to dive into uh, session number four today. If we take our, our content and we have our, our design, uh, in a lot of ways these are two separate things. And I actually want to make sure that we're all kind of conscious and aware of that difference between, uh, between these two. Because moving forward, we're going to be using different programming techniques and technologies to accomplish both of them. When it comes to actually uh, putting the, doing the programming and, and building the site, this one, what we're going to be taking a look at today, being the HTML, and then design is what we're going to be taking a closer look at next week, and that's going to be uh, related to CSS. So uh, we're going to lead into uh, HTML. Awesome. I'm going to hand it over to James, and awesome. he's going to guide you through uh, a trip to HTML land. Cool. So I'm going to walk you through uh, HTML. Uh, it's an acronym. It means hyper text uh, markup thing. This is not a programming language. It's tags that you use to mark up in plain text documents. And they look like this. Got that. Um, as you can see, there's, a tag, there's one tag. It's opening tag. And then we put the content in. And then there's closing tag. Um, what the browser reads is these two and displays whatever is in between this, which is the content. So basically, the tag is made up of an opening bracket, uh, an identifier, and a closing bracket. Any, any browser reads any plain text document. For Windows, it's uh, Notepad. And for Mac, it's text edit. So basically, to start um, any HTML document, you got to use three main tags. Um, so there's an HTML tag. Then there's a header tag. And then we clo always close uh, your tag. When you have an opening, you always have to close it. Then we have the body tag. Right now, they don't mean really anything. So we got to kind of create a hi hierarchy. So the HTML tag, what it does, tells the browser, this is where uh, the, HTML or the web page is starting. So everything that's in the HTML tag tells the browser that, hey, this display this. This is what you need to recognize. Now, the header tag is basically where all your information is going to go that, that tells your browser about this page. And your body is what displays all your content. Uh, so my name is Ryan Coelho. I lead a community of small business owners. I'm a community connector, so I'm helping connect their businesses with the right resources, as well as other potential leads, synergies, etc. What would you say is the most important point to take home with you about HTML? Uh, it has to be sort of the format and the things that are required, so like the head, the body. I always knew the HTML tags had to be there, but I never knew what needed to go into where. So when I'm reading stuff on, say, a WordPress blog, and that's why I really want to learn this, is when I look through the coding on a WordPress blog, I'm not sure why things are where they are, or if I want to change it where they have to be. So really the structure is what's helping me the most, or the most valuable. I felt this was the basic stuff I needed to know, and I was sort of familiar with it. 
I want to take it to the next level and try to get uh, a lot, as much info on HTML. So when the CSS time comes, uh, it's pretty easy to, to use. Getting back into HTML, we're going to get into some of the more uh, advanced uh, aspects of HTML. When we need to give instructions to the browser and say, you know, hello browser, looking great today. I need you to give me a heading. That's our instruction. This is our way of saying, hey, browser, great job. Thanks for doing that for me. But I'm all done my heading. And then your heading's done. Same thing with the paragraph, list item tags, same deal. So that's when we need to format and render a specific type of text. These guys here, not so much formatting something, but we're rendering something. We want a, a line break. Uh, we want a horizontal rule. We specifically want something in particular. Uh, one of the interesting things here, though, is you see how we have this blank document uh, showing up? If we go into the view and we go into the page, we see we got three options, right? And this is something that, that's pretty common amongst these full-featured uh, web browsers. Because, uh, and, and a question that actually came up during the break, you know, isn't there an easier way? Do we have to, you know, just look at all these codes all the time? Um, short answer is no, we don't. Long answer being no, we don't. But if you don't kind of get some sort of fundamental understanding of HTML and something goes wrong with these visual editors, it's a real pain in the ass to go back and, and try to fix it if you don't know anything about it. So we got three options. We got design, split, and code, right? So the design option is what we're looking at right now. We can see that there's no HTML uh, code or anything on there at all. But if we slip down to the code option, we can see by default, and this is just a brand new document. We just opened a, a, a new document, nothing there. There's already a whole bunch of code already going on in the background. Now, hopefully you guys can recognize those basic codes, uh, those basic tags that James mentioned at the very beginning, which are necessary for all HTML documents. So um, the terminology that we need to get into play here, uh, so there's our A tag. And what we need to add to this is we need to add more information. And uh, just to make sure that we've got all of our slang right, what do we refer to these things as? So this is our tag, right? So our, our tag name is still the same thing, right? Our tag is what be shows up at the beginning after that first, you know, uh, caret symbol. Then what we have after that is this is known as an attribute. And this is known as a value. Uh, you know, if we took it to, if we took uh, people for an instance, right? Like, let's say this was the people tag, right? So we would have something like, um, you know, people or maybe person. And then eye color equals brown, right? So it's, it's the same kind of concept. You've got your general tag. But you're just including some more information that, that, that's necessary to more refine. What, did it, what, what is it specifically about this tag? What's this tag supposed to do? Tell me more about it. Right? So browsers understand tags. Tags can have attributes and values assigned to those attributes with them. A right? couple things to note about that. There's no limit to the numbers of attributes and values something can have. So some advanced kind of technologies, they can use a lot of meta information. And, and, and moving, moving forward, um, a lot of technologies are relying on this very structure to do a lot of different things, right? So if you think of a, of a shopping cart, for instance, maybe a shopping cart would have, um, you know, item, uh, and then it would be price equals this, size equals this, right? So there's a lot of attributes and values that anything can have, and which is why HTML and those kind of related languages are very, very flexible, very, very frequently used. What were some of the highlights of the second half of the session? Well, Mark highlighted Expression Web, which was cool. I've never used it. And so just learning about all the different tags and markups and kind of how everything comes together when it's a little more complex. Um, and I think that the template is the first time I've seen either of them. So uh, the template seems just there's a lot more options. It's kind of more user friendly, Expression Web is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Uh, we are, we're quite happy to be here. Uh, we are from My City Lives, and, uh, and we're going to hit it on, uh, as Mark mentioned, the topic of the science of startups. Basically, guys, we're over the talk today and how we've been 
living our lives over the last year and a bit. Um, three main things, you've got to surround yourself by good people. And it's just kind of needed for everything you do because you really cannot do everything by yourself. You need to make sure that you're happy in what you're doing, at least most of the time, because if every day you dread going into the office, um, the, the money alone when you're starting off is definitely not gonna do it for you, so you need to make sure you're actually enjoying what you're doing. And the third thing is you have to hit your head against the wall a lot. You really need to make sure that after the first or fifth or hundredth hiccup that you don't give up because eventually something you'll find the right people in the right place and stuff will align. All right, startup romance and startup reality. I, I kind of mentioned this. We, we often hear entrepreneurs talk about uh, the good old days when they, when they started uh, and, and this romantic notion of uh, living, living in your parents' basement or how it was you were one day away from everything, everything going wrong uh, and then it just picked up. And again, you hear those stories because they made it and it's really important to, to remember that many more people have not. And so you've got to be aware that there is a difference between the startup romance and startup reality and that the reality uh, is that it's really darn hard. The web's like the wild, wild west still. Like this is our generation's great equalizer. No generation prior to that has had the opportunity to build as, as, as much wealth and have as much impact on the world as we have because of the ability to use the web in, in the ways that we do. Uh, well, first we started off with the basics. Um, we started with uh, Notepad, which is Windows uh, plain text editor, and TextEdit, which is for Mac. The second half, when we got into some of the more in-depth HTML stuff, we took a look at some of the more kind of robust, full-featured uh, text editors. So we got into uh, Expression Web, which is available through, uh, through the Microsoft, Microsoft platform installer, as well as uh, we took a quick peek at Dreamweaver, which is Adobe's uh, text editor solution, and also even some open source ones like um, uh, NetBeans, NetBeans uh, Notepad++, JEdit. Right. Uh, we didn't take a look into them today, but uh, I could see in, in, in future sessions we might kind of pop them open and check under the hood.